Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please click that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. So today I brought you out here to beautiful Tonto National Forest, and I'm going to be doing a review of my Trek Marlin 7 mountain bike. Now I picked this up from Landis Cyclery in Phoenix here. There's actually a half a dozen locations around the area. And I went and kind of test rode a couple different bikes. And if you're in the market, uh, like I was, I suggest you do the same thing. Get out there and maybe uh, hop on a couple different bikes and see what you think. I compared this to a specialized rock hopper. And I'll tell you right away, the first thing I noticed was the forks on the uh, specialized rock hopper had a little bit of give, uh, you know, this way. They, they felt just a little bit, I guess not as stout as I would have liked. So I did take a look at the Marlin and I jumped on it, rode it around the parking lot. I thought it was an awesome bike, and it is. I was looking for something that I could take out on the bike path with my wife and my daughter. Um, you know, we have a trailer, so I could tow the trailer. And as far as my wife was concerned, you know, a $100 Walmart bike was fine for her. And you have to know what you're looking for. For me, it was something that, um, yes, the $100 Walmart bike, uh, it's good for a couple miles down, down a bike path, and that's all she's looking to do. But I wanted something that I could go on more of like a 20 mile journey with, you know, and not be worrying about chain slipping and stuff like that. Something that I could go uh, not only on the paved trails with, but also take out here to somewhere like the Tonto National Forest and take off off trail a little bit. Something that had a little bit of a front suspension. This is a hard tail, so it's not a full suspension bike that I'm gonna go uh, bombing down big mountain bike trails with, but I also know myself and that's also something I'm not really gonna be doing. I'll be doing maybe a little bit of light trail riding. And, and this really fit the bill perfectly. So if you're somebody uh, like myself who's looking to maybe get back into biking again, you wanna buy something that's gonna last you a long time, be able to hold up to a little bit of abuse, you know, rides on bike paths perfectly, uh, and that also has the ability to go off a road, I really suggest you take a look at this Marlin 7. Now I've had this bike for about a month and a half. Uh, I've put about 60 miles on it, give or take, and, it, it's, and it's been a absolute pleasure. This is my first real bike, I would say. You know, I've, again, I've gone through the, the $100 cheapos from, from Walmart and Target, and those have their place, but I wasn't looking for that. This is something that if you're on the fence, go out and test ride one. It is like night and day. First of all, this frame, it, it, the bike itself weighs 30 pounds, uh, which is, you know, for a hardcore mountain biker is heavy, but for somebody like me who's uh, you know, just out for kind of a leisurely uh, pace, a 30 pound bike is, is absolutely perfect. It's kind of the sweet spot of, of uh, durability and something that's gonna be able to get you down the path uh, quickly. So if I'm going at a good clip, I can get this bike up to about 13 sustained miles an hour. Uh, that's on a bike path. Uh, I can I can keep it up there. I was even considering possibly switching these tires from a two and a half wide to something a little more narrower, possibly for making it more a, a hybrid. The reason why I bought this bike is the 100 millimeter RockShox front suspension. It has a lockout on it, so if you're going down some paved trails and you don't want to lose your uh, effort into the forks where when you start pedaling hard, the front end wants to kind of jump down a little bit on you and you're wasting energy in that fork you can lock that out. So you can basically convert this back to like a rigid front end. Uh, in doing so, you really have a best of both worlds bike, in my opinion. You have hydraulic brakes, which uh, again, this is my first bike with hydraulic brakes. I absolutely love uh, these brakes. They are absolutely awesome. It has the Shimano Isera uh, front and rear derailers. The shifting is, is really, really smooth. You know, how this thing is geared is perfect. And again, I consider myself to be just an average biker. I'm not sitting here uh, comparing these derailers to other derailers. I do understand that there is a big difference when it comes to parts and pieces, but that was just something that I wasn't, um, I, I'm not educated enough to really get into nitpicking uh, the, the parts and pieces. What I can say is that when you spend money, the hardware certainly comes with that. These tires are, are, are pretty good so far. I've had no problems. The blender stem is really great. I actually bought a GoPro mount. So I have a light that basically had a little bit of a compression rubber fitting that came around the handlebar and uh, riding at night, it, it, it really bounced and it would, it would turn itself. So I converted with the blender stem here. They have a GoPro mount and I converted my light over to a GoPro mount so I can really kind of tighten that down. I can also attach a GoPro camera on the front. I also put this Topeak rack on the back. This is the Topeak Explorer 29er. Uh, again, this is a 29er bike, so the, the wheels are 29 inch. Uh, and I wanted to have a rack on here so I could put a bag uh, on the back for off-road journeys, uh, stuff like that. I actually bought this because my goal was actually to be able to bike to work with this bag. And it has these side uh, pan airbags on here. And 
it, it works out well. It, it, you know, it attaches onto the bottom here. You have this big bag that, that attaches. My 15 inch laptop, I have a massive Dell uh, for work, just barely doesn't fit in here. And I, I, it would have to be in here naked, which I'm not gonna do that with a laptop and have it you know, jiggling around in here. Uh, smaller, like a MacBook or something like that, would fit in here perfectly. Uh, and you could do that probably in a, a case. I will link in the description below to this MTX uh, Topeak bag. I, I really strongly recommend it. The only issue is with these Topeak bags that, that I kind of experienced and I, and I modified because of it. If you have this under seat saddle bag on here, uh, it does ride the release for this Topeak here. And what I've done is I put a little clip on here. Basically this clip is just enough to keep this from, from releasing itself. I did have that happen when we were um, out riding with my daughter. So I decided to keep this bag for basically family rides and then I kept the uh, a crate on the back for uh, longer rides to work and stuff like that. Now I with this bike I am not worried about uh, any pedal upgrades or anything until maybe it, it becomes necessary. I did put on this Bontrager uh, kickstand on here and I went with the one that's that's really robust. It hooks on to uh, the bar here and then comes up and, and also hooks here so it's a real uh, stable, secure, steady uh, kickstand. This is the one the bike shop said that they put on all the police bikes, which have typically a bunch of heavy stuff on there. And that's the one that I wanted to go with. I actually had to special order this. Uh, the bike shops didn't have it in stock, but I just ordered it online. And I'll link that in the description below also. Uh, I need this kickstand because when you're attaching the trailer on the back for my daughter, the bike has to stay up and, and, and stationary. And if you're gonna stop and have to adjust the baby or something like that, uh, you need to be able to support the bike. This is the 19 and a half inch frame of the Marlin 7. Uh, again, the, the wheels are the 29 inch wheels uh, on this model. And 90% of this bike's life is probably going to be on bike paths, uh, the road, sidewalks, going between curbs and, and road and stuff like that. So I wanted something that kind of handle maybe jumping up and down off of curbs, some basically city riding. And then uh, I just wanted to kind of show you here how this thing handles off road as well. So without further ado, uh, let's get to it. So this is what I'm talking about when I say an all around bike. I wanted something that I could take off of the pavement onto these trails and have it perform well. And this Trek Marlin 7 performs even better than I had anticipated. Uh, to be honest with you, I was kind of looking for something that just kind of would get through it, uh, but this does uh, way better than I thought. You can maintain speed uh, through some really rough terrain and, and it really handles it quite well. Uh, the speeds with these 29 inch wheels are really uh, no concern at all. It really just kind of powers through everything. So I'm very impressed with this off-road capability. But like I mentioned, this bike is 90% of the time going to live on pavement. And when I talk about this bike being good on pavement and off-road, I'm really, uh, I mean, I, I don't even know how to explain it uh, well enough. My experience with mountain bikes on the pavement has kind of always been less than stellar, and that's because I've always used the uh, cheap Walmart bikes. And where you really notice the difference between those cheap bikes and this Trek Marlin 7 is that the front shock is just really refined. As you can see, it soaks up the transitions between the pavement and sidewalk really well. And as I jump up and down on it, you can see that's the travel of the fork when it's unlocked. And then when you lock it, it really restricts the motion of that front shock and lets you put all that power right down to the pavement. So again, I, I really highly recommend that you take a look at this Trek Marlin 7. I have had a great, great uh, experience with it at this point so far. And I would highly recommend this to anybody who's looking to get a more serious bike that's going to last you for a long time and really get some enjoyment out of. So like always, I thank you very much for watching. If this is your first time, please click that subscribe button down below. And remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. And we will see you next time. Thank you.